issue of access to vaccines. We have made a proposal which is supported by more than 100 countries. And what we have said is we want, and this comes back to what the youth were saying as well, they want to know whether they have a continent which will help to develop their skills where they can thrive. But what do we want? We want to be able to make our own vaccines. And we will deal with the issue of reluctance uh, for our Africans to take vaccines. But we want to make vaccines. We don't just want to fill and finish and package, which is what we are being offered. That we want you to build capacity to fill, finish, and package, and uh, we will send you the drug substance. And we say, no, we want you to relax the intellectual property rights for a while so that we can make the drug substance because we have the capability. And there are quite a number of countries on the continent that can. And right now, we've got countries like Egypt, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, Senegal, Rwanda, South Africa, and Kenya. Easily, they have the capability, the manufacturing capability. And we are saying we want to be able, to, we want to go beyond just getting the substance from Europe or wherever, filling and distributing. We want to make the drug substance because that is where the intellectual property resides. And that is where we want our young people who are epidemiologists, who are scientists, to see that there is a future for them. Then they will not go to Europe. They will not go to America. They will stay here because they will know that they can work effectively and display all the skills we have. Now, what does the world, the, the, the northern part of the world do? They say, no, we know what is good for you. We just want you to do fill and finish. And that's it. And we say, no, we no longer want that. You did that long ago when you colonized us. And when you raped and pillaged our countries, we're saying, no, now we have the capability and we want to make all these things ourselves. Now, quite often we find that there is a bit of paternalism that underpins the relationship between us. I'll give you a very good example. After Omicron uh, was announced, I was due to travel to West Africa. And in traveling uh, in the wake of Omicron, I received calls from the four presidents that I was going to travel to, President Makisal, Buhari, Watara, uh, as well as uh, Akufunana. And they said, we've heard about this Omicron. Omicron, are you still coming? We want you to come. What can we do to help? And, and I said, President, 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 if you still relax about our coming, we are coming. A plane load of us, together with journalists, we got on the way. Before I left, I also got some calls from Europe. And the calls were so paternalistic. They were saying, hello, President Ramaphosa. We've heard about this Omricon. I am sorry to tell you that we are banning travel to Europe from South Africa and Southern Africa. No discussion, no attempt to hear what our views are. And I'm saying that the relationship is to, needs to be mutually respectful. We need to respect one another. The African presidents respected me as we respect one another. But from Europe, I just got a message of saying, we've banned travel, thank you, goodbye, see you next time. That's not the way to conduct a relationship.